No one's gonna come and save you. I can't rescue you. Jesus isn't coming back to rescue you. No extraterrestrial is gonna come and pick you up in their spacecraft anytime soon because we live in a world of sovereignty and freedom. We just don't realize it because we've bought into our own kind of prison system. So immortality, should we die? Is it something that's written into our own genetic code? Is it part of our own mathematics? Is there a mathematical equation inside our physical anatomy that brings us to that point where the physical body decays and the soul goes on its merry way? Continuing the journey is energy. If you go back to when we had our original templates, we lived for a long time. We're supposed to choose when we want to exit these vehicles, these human avatars. But the gene code has been played around with. Everywhere you look in this human world, there are codes stamped into reality. I mean, I was at Amsterdam airport, literally a week and a half ago, coming home from a plant medicine retreat. And I went into Starbucks, bought a bottle of water. I came back out and I looked at this little, like a relaxation place, sort of across the way. And I've been to this airport a gazillion times and I've seen this relaxation place a gazillion times. And they they have like um, massage beds, you can sort of lie on it, they massage. They've got various different therapies in there. Now, when I looked in there this time, they had this new machine. It was like this futuristic machine. It was like a, a capsule, a long capsule that you lie in with one seat and you're kind of relaxed looking up. And guess what they had on the ceiling? they had the false tree of life. The false tree of life code with the, the 10 strand template, which stops and halts and puts the ceiling on our own DNA template when we're trying to elevate and expand and unlock the information from within our computer code. If you look at the Kabbalah and things like that, they've got this, they use this false tree of life symbol. The, the true tree of life is the 12 strand template, which is the original Cathara grid, which is the, the frequency in the, of the rotation out from the zero point at 45 degree angle, which is the true crystalline code, the new earth mathematics, which is the new earth mathematics that we're moving through now, but it's the original template, the original mathematics. It's a remembrance that's taking place on planet earth, not actually something new, even though people call them the new earth codes. Even though we are rebirthing a new earth, it's an ancient earth that we're bringing back to reality. Because we had this original codex at one point. We had this original mathematical template. But seeing this in the Amsterdam airport, I was like, whoa, they're, they're bringing it in everywhere now. You know, it's in full plain sight. But it, look, it looked beautiful like this. Um, it was lit up like an electric blue, lights coming through it. I mean, you'd, you'd look at it and think, wow, what a cool symbol. And for people just sitting down and relaxing in a completely zeroed state, really truly relaxed, the brain waves are slowing down. So that false template is being coded into their architecture and it's changing their mathematics or just resyncing their mathematics into this false code. And this is why humans struggle so much because we're running this false mathematical code. And we have been for a long time. A lot of nature's running this false mathematical code. Our human bodies, we run this false mathematical code. We're supposed to be a lot bigger. We have to re-engineer our inner structure. And as we re-engineer our inner structure, our inner template, we start to recode the universe at large. As above, so below. As below, as above. So within, so without. Everything's connected. We've got stars and planets and galaxies inside every cell of our body, even though they're out there somewhere, up in space. But outer space is no different from inner space. They're just the same. And that's a lot for some people to get their head around, but this is just the truth. And I don't expect you to believe anything that I'm telling you. Go into your heart, meditate on it, feel it. Dive into this information and you will get to know the truth yourself because all the answers lie within your heart. Just don't try and figure them out up here because you're gonna go around and around in circles. You've got to move into that zero point, into that silence to know the truth, 
and to feel and to see beyond the illusion. But we as humans, when we activate our original 12 strand template, which actually is not an original 12 strand template, it's a 13 strand template. Because the 12 pieces of the puzzle make up the whole, which makes the 13th piece, which brings the masculine and feminine into wholeness. 13 is the magical number. And as children, we've been told to stay away from, from 13. 13 is unlucky. Friday the 13th is dangerous. It's like you're supposed to get your hair cut on a Friday. If you want to get your nails cut, your toenails, your fingernails, get them cut on a Friday. It helps with the growth. It's amazing. This is ancient knowledge. This is mystery school stuff. But in a lot of cultures, they tell you not to cut your toenails on a Friday. <laughs> Don't cut your toenails on a Friday, it's bad luck. The truth is everywhere. But we've been blindsided and railroaded. We are immortal beings. When we lived on the planet Tara, we were angelic humanoids with pineal glands four or five times larger. We could bilocate in our Merkaba fields, telekinesis, telepathy, healing. At distance, all of these things were just second nature, easy peasy but we've lost our way. If you go all the way back to the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were supposed to procreate and produce more high frequency beings before they procreated with the local indigenous race. They were supposed to procreate and get to around a million souls in human bodies or in high frequency avatar bodies with a 12 strand activated template before they went out and procreated with the humans of the time, which were a lesser of a race. The reason Adam and Eve went into the Garden of Eden was to restructure the template that had been messed around with. But Adam and Eve got tempted. People say they got tempted with the apple. I mean, look at the Apple iPhone, <laughs> the bite out of the apple. This is all symbolic. The planetary prince at the time tempted Adam and Eve to procreate with the local indigenous races before getting to a million purebred souls with violet blood, with plasma for blood. This red iron core that we have coursing through our veins at the moment, this is not where it's at. High frequency, 12 strand activated template. Beings have this violet blood, this plasma blood. And if you go into the Garden of Eden quantumly, and there's ancient mystery school teachings that show you how to do this, we actually are launching a new teaching in April 2024 with these, with these teachings to help people reactivate this original template in such a succinct fashion. Because there is a, a mathematical formula to this. Oxygen in the blood is another important thing. But just coming back to this Adam and Eve thing for a moment, the planetary prince tempted them into procreating and it was too early. And there wasn't enough force within the human gene pool to restructure the, the restructure and get to the original template because the original gene code had been, been played around with by malevolent beings that had come to planet Earth. And so these Andromedan beings, that we call Adam and Eve, they were extraterrestrials with these large bodies, these electric blue and diamond light body fields. They had halos around their heads. These beings, Adam and Eve, were supersonic, high frequency, powerful beyond measure, just like we were when we lived on the planet Tara. But they got tempted because when you're here in this third dimensional reality, temptation's everywhere. And it's in our face with the iPhone Apple, the temptation the bite that they took from the apple, the chunk they took from the apple. And that chunk kept humanity enslaved. And that is why the iPhone is a cell phone, because you're in your prison cell, engaged in it daily. But it's you that's keeping yourself in your own prison cell. That's the magic and the beauty and the matrix and the game that these beings have constructed. It's an invisible prison. 
And the amazing thing is, it's we as human beings that keep ourselves in prison. And we're the prison guards. If someone steps out of line within their community, within their family, within their social environment, human beings are the first one to point the finger. Like crabs, pulling the other crabs back into the bucket to keep them in order, so they don't escape. Because when one human being escapes and raises their frequency, it creates a pathway for others. But at the same time, what it does is it disrupts the identity of the human beings that are in the environment with that human being that climbed out of the bucket. And when the identity gets broken down, it causes pain. So the ego defends that identity at all costs. The darker side of the human defends that identity at all costs because dark and light are inside every single one of us. True masters know that and alchemize both light and dark into the zero point in the heart space. But most human beings are either in the dark or in the light and they're unbalanced and you're never going to find your true power like that. But we are immortal beings and we have the potential to recode our own internal cellular structure which is running off a bi-wave polarity for most human beings, the vesica pisces. Energy shuttles backwards and forwards in the vesica pisces. It has nowhere to go. So we get old and we die. We decay. What we have to do is to move from a bi-wave model to a tri-wave model where a third cellular piece comes in, into place, a third sphere. And that third sphere enables the energy to flow around the three spheres. So it doesn't shuttle backwards and forwards. It actually circulates. And this is how we bring back longevity. This is how we bring back immortality. A key component to this is oxygen. We have to oxygenate our body. When we masturbate, when we have sex and a man orgasms and ejaculates and that energy shoots out through the crown and the seed shoots out in the semen, that seed is lost. What happens when you know how to work your body properly through breath work, then what you can do, that seed that germinates with the milk and the honey, within the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, the masculine, the feminine, the male, the female, the magnetic, the electrical, when the milk and the honey, they run down the spinal column, Jacob's ladder through those 33 vertebrae, they go down, into the solar plexus and the seed gets germinated and then what happens in males and females you can bring that seed back up through the spinal column and into the brain and then when that energy is released into the brain it oxygenates the body the seed is born back into the pineal gland this is the rebirth this is the real resurrection and this is what helps create longevity in the body there are many different types of breath work that you can use to activate this, but the one that we share within star magic is the pineal gland breath, where you squeeze the buttocks, the perineum, the genitals, you pull the abdominals back towards the spinal column. You pull the frequency up to your crown and you hold your breath. The first thing you do before this happens is you connect to Mother Earth's heart directly into her God seed atom and you pull the platinum light from her bottom tetrahedron because her heart is a Merkaba field. You pull the light up into your perineum. You connect with that platinum magnetic code and then you breathe it up to your crown. Hold your breath whilst you're squeezing your buttocks, your perineum, your genitals and pulling your abdominals back to your spinal column. Hold it for as long as you can. When you get to the point where you need to breathe, breathe out and release the squeeze. And you can run that for six minutes, nine minutes, 12 minutes, as long as you want. This should be a daily practice for people. Bringing that seed back up into the brain, bringing that energy, that magnetic code back up into the brain. When you start to work the breath properly and you create a tri-wave cellular structure by bringing an electric pink light down from Sirius into a Merkaba field spinning around your pineal gland and you bring an electric green and electric platinum light from Mother Earth's Merkaba up into your heart, up into your solar plexus, and you start to run these three Merkaba fields, which is something I go into deep detail in within my new book, Activate Your Superhuman Potential, then you can start to change 
the bi-wave vesica pisces model to a tri-wave model and you can reverse the aging process this information is mystery school teaching information this is something that everybody wants new but they've wiped it out of all of our books they've scrubbed it from everything that we read because they do not want us to be empowered this information for a lot of people seems completely crazy but this is just truth and the only way you're going to know if it's truth is by going into your heart and asking the questions and feeling this information and also by practicing it and seeing the results if you go to starmagichealing.org and you become an infinity member all of these different practices are something that we've got available in our master classes so you can go and check that out if you want to we are immortal beings we're supposed to be able to leave this planet whenever we want to leave this planet i wrote in my book into the light over 10 years ago that i would be on this planet till i was at least 250 years old or maybe 250 years young and i still feel i will be on this planet for a long time because there's a lot of work to do people talk about this new earth and this new age and you know banking systems collapsing and new protocols coming into place like it's going to happen tomorrow it's not going to happen tomorrow it might happen this century it might happen in the next 80 years before the end of this century but that's a blip in the vast ocean of time when you look at this from a galactic perspective we as humans are young beings you know living to 60 70 80 90 100 we're still babies living to 150 is still very very young when you look at some of these races living to four five six hundred years some of them are thousands some of them are longer some of them are eternal we have 12 planetary stargates according to a lot of different systems actually there's 13 the same as the original true cathara grid there are 12 points on it but the 12 together make up the 13th and without that 13th you can't run the proper mathematical code if you go back to australia the Dogon races that used to control the Stargate at Ayers Rock and the Aboriginal races that have taken it over from them and that still control that Stargate system, this transharmonic gateway, the only uncorrupt primary Stargate on planet Earth. There are other secondary Stargate systems that are uncorrupted, absolutely. But from the original primary Stargate system, that's the only one that stayed uncorrupted, that the dark side never got their hands on. It was too important it was the the goddess code the divine feminine because without that sacred magnetic mathematical feminine code everything turns to custard it's why men and women have to respect each other it's why men have to truly respect the feminine and realize that men are here to serve the feminine because by men serving the feminine and holding space for the feminine the feminine can do what they're good at that is being magnetic that is being sacred and powerful divine goddesses that can alchemize anything, that can create and manifest from that beautiful sacred womb they have. And men have a sacred womb too. And when the masculine and the feminine come together and zero point those kundalini energies, you create maximum firepower. Nothing can beat that. And when you have divine union working with that kundalini zero pointed, you can manifest anything just like that the mathematics were created in such a fashion so precisely we've forgotten all of this stuff these teachings these mystery school teachings have been lost immortality should be like riding a bike everybody in this world today wants everything very quickly but there's nothing quick in sacredness sacredness is wholeness and wholeness takes a little bit of time and space to magnetize and manifest and be in pure equilibrium, in divine harmony as one. Because we as a humanity are fragmented, we as individuals are fragmented. Multiple fragments of our soul are all over the place, but we can zero point that into the now space through intention, through meditation, and catalyze massive firepower right now in this eternal present moment and that's why it's called the present moment because when you bring all of those pieces of you back into e equilibrium you give yourself the best present and that is maximum firepower and when you're moving through the stargate of your own heart in equilibrium you start to connect to the stargate systems within our worldly environment our planetary environment within our galactic and our universal environment and all of those stargate systems plug mathematically 
into our vital organs. And when you've got those Stargate systems plugging into the vital organs mathematically correctly, you reach a whole new level of energy, a whole new level of vitality. And your organs plug into your transmission centers. Your transmission centers plug into the 12 points on your stellated dodecahedron your multi-dimensional Merkaba field, which is 10 tetrahedrons, five male, five female, with 12 points. The 12 points plug into your 12 transmission centers, and then your alpha and your omega, they plug through your earth star, through the Aramatina gateway, up into the God worlds. This is how we run frequency. And not many people know this, but when you plug in electrically and magnetically to the star grids and to the earthly grids, on a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and so on dimensional level. You become the powerful superhuman that you came to planet Earth to be. These cosmic keys and these cosmic codes are inside us. We are planetary stargate guardians. It's why we came to Earth. But our memory gets blank slated on entry, and we've got to rediscover this stuff all over again. But luckily, we're starting to discover this stuff a lot quicker now. And these children that are coming onto the planet now they're coming in untouched, unscathed. And they're like little keys that are driving their mathematical code into our energetic templates and opening us up as older, supposedly wiser human beings, people that we call adults in this human reality. We're playing a game and it should be fun. It shouldn't be hard, it should be fun. Games are supposed to be fun. Games are supposed to be enjoyable. Games are supposed to challenge and test you though, but when you're challenged and tested, you should enjoy the process, not get stressed out by the process, because the process is the process. And what a lot of human beings do is they separate themselves from the process. They see the process here and them here, and that they have to move through this process. Actually, the human being and the process are one of the same. But when you try and separate it, it causes problems. We are in one long process and it should be fun and enjoyable. And we should be waking up every single day, happy, full of joy, full of vitality, loving life. Knowing that there's dark, knowing that there's light, knowing that we are in a spiritual war, but it's the reason that we came to planet Earth because we've been training for this for billions of years. They don't just let any souls down onto this planet. No way. They let the best of the best, A1 souls, onto this earth plane. We've been training, you've been training for a long time. This is like Top Gun flight school, baby. We are the elite, the best of the best. And we came down here to set the record straight, to recalibrate human consciousness to blaze trails and activate this ancient diamond code so we can live in sovereignty and freedom and activate these human vessels to maximum potential so we can actually love life down here and enjoy this beautiful planet because this planet has so much to offer us but we often just see the bullshit, the negativity. There are beautiful things. There is magic everywhere. There are so many places to travel to and see. And the funny thing is, when you do start traveling, you realize that everybody everywhere just wants to love each other. I've been all over the place. I've been onto the streets of Nairobi several years ago. And I remember seeing some guys with fires burning out of oil drums, AKs over their shoulder, drinking bottles of beer. It was the middle of the night. I've walked up to them. They've welcomed me, offered me a beer. No one's tried to cause harm. I've been to Caracas in Venezuela where it's pretty harsh. I've been to some crazy places in Russia and in in, in, in Eastern Europe. I've been to the Middle East. I've been all over this planet. And what they show you on the news that there's this happening there and this happening here and you shouldn't go there because it's dangerous, it's a load of bullshit. We run a tour of Egypt every single year. This tour that we've got coming up in 2024 in March, we sold it out pretty much straight away. And then over the next few months, when all the war started kicking off, wherever it was over the border in Palestine or wherever, I'm not sure, because I don't pay too much attention to the news, people started pulling out of the trip saying, you know, are you going? It's a bit dangerous, blah, blah, blah. We're like, yeah, we're going. (laughs) Why are we gonna let that stop us? Anyway, lots of people pulled out and more people bought in. Always the right people go. But it goes to show, even in a 
a deeply integrated spiritual community like star magic you have souls that are scared to go to a country where there's a war 300 kilometers over the border people still live in fear why would you choose fear over love when you can choose whichever one you want we have the crystal keys and the cosmic codes inside our bodies inside our souls inside our light body architecture take a deep dive into the labyrinth of your heart and you'll uncover these truths and you'll start to activate these keys. Breathe deeply, meditate, exercise. So many people want to fly around on their spiritual journeys, travel into other dimensional spaces, but they forget their physical. Doing your exercise is mission critical. Grounding these codes into this physical reality is everything. Getting lost in these multi-dimensional playing fields is a trick. Yes, you need to do some work there, but you gotta get the balance. If you don't get the balance, you're F-U-C-K-E-D with a big capital F, baby. You need to be balanced in all facets of life. Do you know how powerful you are? Challenge yourself to abstain from masturbation and sexual intercourse for 40 days. Get yourself down the gym, fast for 18 hours a day from six in the evening to 12 the next day. Eat clean foods, hydrate yourself well, good clean water, do some Qigong, get yourself down in the gym. Start incorporating these basic ways of being in this human world into your life and I guarantee you, your energy is gonna change and all of those crystalline keys and those cosmic keys inside of you will naturally start to activate. Your DNA template will start to switch on and you'll become a more empowered human. The thing is this, no one's gonna come and save you. I can't rescue you. Jesus isn't coming back to rescue you. No extraterrestrial is gonna come and pick you up in their spacecraft anytime soon because we live in a world of sovereignty and freedom. We just don't realize it because we've bought into our own kind of prison system. But when you step outside of that matrix into sovereignty and freedom, we can live a brand new life on planet Earth. We can exercise our divine rights to live, to love, to laugh, to travel, to do whatever we want to do. As long as we don't cause harm or steal from another human being. As long as every interaction is more life to all and less to none, then we've cracked it. The sacred code, baby. You are amazing. I am amazing. We together are unstoppable. Strength in numbers. We are humanity. Forget about black, forget about white. There are still so many groups out there on this planet that are dividing things, even in this spiritual field. Black communities, white communities, Indian communities. When are these souls gonna realize that any kind of division is separation? And the only way we're gonna come together is by being one unifying unity baby one love one heart one human family one love one heart one galactic family no separation no black no white no rich no poor no yellow no brown no fat no thin no discrimination no judgment no classes just pure acceptance of one another realizing that all of us as human beings have sacred pieces of code we're like a giant jigsaw puzzle and every single human has a piece of code that is congruent to that jigsaw puzzle. Now, I'm not talking about the human beings that are really extraterrestrial beings, malevolent ones, but I'm talking about human beings, men and women, regardless of what DNA strand you're running right now, regardless of whether you're awake or you're asleep, we are one. The human race is like a body, like an organism. You've got kidneys and cells and a liver and adrenal glands, arteries, a nervous system. If one part of that human body is misfunctioning, the rest of the body is gonna suffer. So we need to remember how to love each other now. Not tomorrow, but now. When are you gonna wake up and smell the coffee? When are you gonna wake up and open your big friggin' heart, man, and shine that diamond light and live from that diamond spark and walk inside your diamond flame with love, compassion, kindness, tenderness but with a fierce and ferocious undertone like a lion and a lioness protecting their cubs in the jungle because it's okay to be fierce and ferocious it's okay to be kind soft and gentle but you've got to bring it in and balance it because women are becoming men and men are becoming women and that's no good we need to rebalance 
We must. We haven't got a choice, baby. Wherever you are on this planet, go out and love your sisters and your brothers, fiercely and ferociously. Hug them tightly and never, ever, ever be the first to let go. That's the golden rule of hugging, man. That's the golden rule of hugging. Shine your light, speak your truth, and make up your own rules of this human game. And I bet you when you do, they'll be much like mine. There's one rule. I don't give a f and neither should you. That's freedom, that's sovereignty. That's when your heart explodes open and you start to love beyond the illusion. Remember to check out our website, starmagichealing.org. We got some of the best ascension tools on the planet. You can connect and get free access to infinity right now. Hundreds of meditations, light language transmissions, light codes to restructure your inner template, masterclasses, mystery school teachings, breath work, nutrition. There's private telegram groups so you can connect with souls on the same mission as you. With big, great, big open hearts and activated third eyes, you can work together as a family, as a tribe. You never know, you might find someone in your backyard. Reconnect with new sisters, new brothers, which are really ancient and old, that you know from the space, that you know from the stars. If you want to train in energy healing, check out Facilitator Training Level 1 at starmagichealing.org. Also check out the healing centers that we're building in Transylvania and Romania. What we're doing works. And we know if we're gonna create a better world, we gotta come together. Separation is the order of the other side. We need to create balance in this world, beautiful soul. Light and dark in equilibrium. Don't try and dance in one or the other. Go into your heart. Welcome your shadow side to the surface. Alchemize it, integrate it. Draw the power from both sides of the force and be the master of both. Walk the middle road. I love you as my sister, as my brother. Join us at starmagichealing.org and I'll see you again real soon, beautiful soul. Go and activate those sacred keys. One love, one heart, one human family. Peace out, beautiful soul.